Welcome. Thanks for tuning in to part three of our three-part video series of Power VS on IBM Cloud. My name is Victoria DeVore. And I'm Daniel Hopwood. And we are technical sales specialists for IBM Cloud. Today, we will walk you through how to provision Power VS on IBM Cloud and give you a tour of the provisioned environment. Let's get started. We'll start by logging in to IBM Cloud by going to cloud.ibm.com. If you don't have an account, you can create one for free, but keep in mind that if you want to test out this offering, you will need a credit card on file. Once you log in, you'll be taken to the dashboard. On the top navigation bar, click on catalog. Then you can search for the power offering. Once I click the offering, it will take me to the provisioning page where I can view the pricing of the offering and provision it, as well as view the docs. Right now we are simply creating a Power Systems Virtual Server group where we can then provision the LPARs once the group has been created. So I'll select the region I'd like the service to be provisioned in. Give the service a unique name. Select the resource group, which is a way to organize resources on your account into a group, for example, by project or by environment type. And then I'll click create. Once the service has been provisioned, you can click into the environment, which will look similar to this. On the left-hand side, you will see tabs for virtual server instances, which will list the LPARs in the environment, SSH keys for the LPARs, storage volumes attached to the LPAR, boot images that are either IBM supplied or customer imported, and subnets, which contain the network details for your LPARs. Let's start by creating a new LPAR. In the Virtual Server Instance tab, click Create Instance. The first thing you'll do is type in an instance name and identify the number of instances you'll need. You can provision multiple instances at once. If you select multiple instances, additional fields will need to be filled out. For co-location rules, you can choose either to put the additional LPAR on the same server, different server, or you can select no preference as well. Then you can choose the naming convention, either numerical prefixes or postfixes. For the purpose of this demo, we will be creating one instance. The next selection you'll need to make is VM pinning. The default setting is off meaning that the LPARs are not pinned to a host. This allows for two availability features that we discussed in part two of our video series, live partition mobility and simplified remote restart. If the VM pinning is set to on, that means that the LPAR cannot be moved to another host for any reason, even planned maintenance. That means that you will not have the live partition mobility or simplified remote restart capabilities which require VM pinning to be off. In this case, if the host were to go down, the LPAR will only be restarted after the failed host comes back online. Now the main use case for turning VM pinning on is for compliance policies or licensing terms that a customer may have to follow. We will keep this feature off for this demo. Next up is adding an SSH key, which you will need to manually generate elsewhere. I'll open up a new terminal window, generate a new SSH key, and copy it to my clipboard. Then, to add the public key I just generated, select New Key. Give the key a name and paste it from your clipboard. 
and then click add. Next, I'll select a boot image. Each LPAR provision comes with a boot volume that contains the OS, which can either be IBM supplied, so AIX or IBM I, or a customer supplied Linux image or custom image. For IBM supplied OS images, there will usually be N to N minus one versions. The next field will ask you to select the tier for the image, either tier one, which is 10 IOPS per gigabyte, or tier three, which is three IOPS per gigabyte. In the profile section, you will first select your machine type. There are three types of machines that you can choose from. S922 is the Power9 scale out machine that's typically used for smaller and distributed workloads with a maximum of 15 cores or four if you're using IBM I. E880 is the Power8 scale up machine for larger enterprise workloads that require a larger number of cores. We also offer E980, which is a Power9 scale up machine. For this demo, I'll select S922. Moving on to the processor type, there are three options to choose from. Dedicated, shared uncapped, or shared capped. With dedicated cores, resources are allocated for a specific client and the LPARs can never use more than allocated. This is the more expensive option because of the performance enhancement. Uncapped shared processors are shared with other clients and capped shared processors are also shared, but the resources don't expand beyond what's requested, which is important when it comes to licensing for third-party vendors. Shared processors both capped and uncapped allow for fractional cores, while dedicated processors require whole cores. For this exercise, we will select shared uncapped. Next, we will choose cores and memory. Since I selected shared cores, I can choose fractional cores. So I will select 0.25 cores. For memory, you can select up to 942 gigabytes for the S922 machine. I will choose two gigabytes of RAM. Next up is storage. In addition to the boot volume, which is created with every LPAR, additional storage can be attached to the LPAR. Click on add new storage volume and give the volume a name. Toggle if you want the volume to be shareable or not, then choose the size of the volume from 10 gigabytes to two terabytes in 10 gigabyte increments. We'll choose 20 gigabytes for the purpose of this demo. Then click create and attach. For networking, you can choose between public and private networks. For this demo, we'll be using the public network, which uses a public VLAN to connect to the LPAR. If you want a private network, you can attach an existing subnet on this provisioning page by filling out the required fields. Once all fields on this page are filled out, you can review your selections on the right sidebar, as well as an estimated monthly cost. If everything looks good to go, you can select Create. Now, I'll hand it over to Daniel Hopwood to walk you through the provisioned LPAR. Now, I'm going to walk you through the functionality and configuration components once your server is provisioned. To start, you'll see on the left-hand side, you have your virtual server instance where you can view all the virtual servers within your environment. You have SSH keys, storage volumes, boot images, and subnets, but we'll get to those later. To start, you can see on the virtual server instance, we have the one virtual server we just made. You can see its IP address, the image, the number of cores, RAM, and its status as active. Now it can take up to 15 minutes for your resource to be provisioned, but once it is, you'll have the green check mark next to it. If you're looking to create more instances, you can simply select create instance here and go through the same process you just went through to create another server for this environment. But for now, we'll dig deeper into this server. So simply select the server name. Here it's test one. And it'll take you into the details of this particular server. 
So you can see here we have the server name, its ID number, its IPs it's associated with, the data was created, the machine type, the processor type, it'll be uncapped shared, capped shared, or dedicated processor. We then have this number of cores and RAM that we just saw, your boot image, if you have VP pinning off or on, and your pin type. Now, if you're looking to change any of these resources, you can simply select Edit Details. Under Edit Details, you are able to change the name if VP pinning is on or off, the number of cores, and how much RAM you have. Quick side note is that however many cores you select in the beginning, you are only allowed to scale up two times that amount with this particular instance. Once you have selected any changes that you'd like to make, you simply agree to the terms and save and edit order. But for now, I'll leave this alone. Next, under the server's details, you're able to see the system reference code, the names of the attached volumes. If you would like to create a new volume, you can simply select add new volume. Now you can see here this volume we currently have provisioned is a bootable volume. And then you can also manage your existing volumes here. Next, you have your public network interface and then your private network interface that you can attach to as well. Scrolling back up, you're able to see there are more management toggles up here up top. Here we have refresh, so you can refresh the instance. You have start if instance has been paused or turned off. You have restart to restart your instance. You also have open console. You have capture and export, and you also have the ability to delete the instance. You can see here on Open Console, this is how you're able to access the Power Console within this environment. So by selecting that, you are able to access your console through a VNC wrap around SSH or 5250 session for IBM I. Uh, this is just a way of creating a private network access over the internet. Once you're logged into here, you're able to see that there are no credentials needed initially to log in. You just press enter and to access this environment. Once you have completed some other activities, you're able to select your root password settings to configure environment as a whole. Next, you'll see capture and export. So if you've configured your LPAR to exactly how you want it and you want to create an image capture of it, you select Capture and Export, and you'll see it load for the particular LPAR that you want to create the image for. And then you can select Image Catalog or Cloud's Object Storage Catalog, or both. For now, we'll just select Image Catalog. You can simply name your image that you have saved. And then once you have named it appropriately and selected the proper LPAR, you can select Capture and Export. To view these images and make sure that they're saved properly, you can simply go to Boot Images, and you can see that I created one uh, just a few days ago to save the progress I had made on the current LPAR I was using. And once your image is saved, it'll say active as these do here. Next, we can look at subnets. These are all very similar settings, just broken down into their individual chunks for this particular environment. You can see we have the public subnet set up. If you'd like to learn more about how to set up a private subnet, you can go here, and you can also create new subnets here as well. Next, we have storage volumes. Storage volume is what we looked at before. This is the one that was the bootable image. You can create it shareable for other instances to be able to obtain information from it as well and also create new volumes up here on the top right. Lastly, for these few columns, we have SSH key. This is the SSH key that you created for access in the very beginning. You're able to select the SSH key here, copy it to your clipboard, and you can use it to log in to the power environment through your terminal. You can also create new SSH keys here. Now going back to the virtual server instance, uh, if you go back, test one, you're able to see that on this dropdown under shutdown, you can select OS shutdown or immediate shutdown. And this is to shut down the current state of the power box that you are running. 
up on the top, you also have actions where you can view documentation for your power server, rename the service, and delete the service here, or delete the service via the trash can here once you are done running this power environment. Now that I've walked through all the different configuration options of your power server environment once it has been created and how to delete it once you're done, I encourage you to go and watch Victoria and I's other videos on what the differentiators of the IBM Power Cloud are and what Power Cloud is. If you're interested in learning more about IBM's Power Virtual Server for Cloud, please feel free to reach out to Victoria or I or your IBM Cloud representative. Thank you.